Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It is of course Chelsea of She Designs Things. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about grids, particularly your Google site grid and how we can make it work so that your website doesn't look like crap. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so here we are taking a look at my Google site. And I just wanted to point out how simple my Google site is. So I'm using it as this example to kind of show you why your Google site looks the way that it does and why it responds the way that it does. Um, so first, in order for you to know why your Google site looks the way that it does, you have to know a little bit about web development. So this part here is going to be super uh, essential to all of you who are wanting to design inside of Google Sites, but you feel that there are too many limitations. So what is it that Google is using for the layout to show the layout um, or to create the layout of your website? Well, this is very simple. <laughs> Google is using a flex box. Now there are two types of layouts that you would typically run across whenever you're creating an HTML. That is the CSS grid and CSS flex box. Google is using flex box. Now flex box is older, but there are a little bit of differences. And I'm going to show you what the differences are between the flex box versus just the CSS grid. So here is pretty much <laughs> exactly what the difference is written in words, which is a CSS Flexbox layout is that Flexbox was designed for layout in one dimension, either a row or a column. And Grid was designed for two dimensional layout rows and columns at the same time. A great testament to this is Blogger versus Google Sites. Google Sites are Flexboxes and Blogger is a CSS grid layout. So let's just take a look at both so that you can kind of see what they look like and why you need to know this before you start your design inside of a Google site. All right, so here we have that CSS grid layout. We have the header and we have a menu and then we have a main and then we have a right and then we have the footer. Now in your Google site, all you see is this. And this for Google Sites goes up to 12 um, rows. You can have 12 rows in your container. So let's just, I'm gonna show you an example of what I've done in the teacher. Um, just so you can see, this is exactly what they're talking about when they say a flex box versus, you know, that grid layout. I have 12 numbers across here. Um, to represent each of the columns or yeah, each of the columns inside of this Google site section. So each section starts their own row. Um, and that's how I'm kind of laying it out just so you can see. So we have the three here and three here and three here. And then I've, you know, increased or decreased the number depending on which direction you're looking at it. Now, say inside of a blogger site, and I'm going to use a client's blogger site that I created for an example. In this blogger site, you see that we are using the grid. And how you know we're primarily using grid to, to display this too is it actually computes it whenever you're looking on the developer side or in Chrome when you, you know, press your F12 or whatever and you want to take a look over on the side, you can take a look and see what layout they're using to generate or to uh, create what you see. So here we can tell that we have different um, little boxes. Now I would also like to point out something that you probably didn't notice about the Google site. If we go back to my Google site, it does look almost like a regular CSS um, grid because we have the main, we have the menu right here and we have a header. Uh, but let, let's just take another look. The menu is here, but let me scroll up just so you can see, um, maybe my homepage, this banner section is across here. This is actually a banner and here we have a header. We do not have access to this, nor to really this across here. 
Um, and when we add the superficial header is what I'm starting to call it. It's literally just uh, another set of rows that we can have. So this is using again, just the flex. So we can only have these columns that align in a row we can't reposition them in any particular way like you would with a regular grid so one more thing that i need to point out is that i do not recommend google sites for all of my clients and it is for the simple reason that they're using a flex box um, versus the grid so put it this way um this is sort of the parameters in which you're working with. You should consider using a grid layout when you have a complex design to work with and want maintainable web pages, and you wanna add gaps over the block elements. You should consider using Flexbox when you have a small design to work with, a few rows and columns. You need to align the element. You don't know how your content will look on the page, and you want everything to fit in. So when people are like saying, oh, I really want to, I wish Google would allow this or that, just understand that they're using a flex box to create that style. So if you want something with a little bit more control, your best bet is to use Blogger. It's also free um, and it is still a Google product. All right, so now let's take the knowledge that we have and apply it to our Google site. So. A grid, which is what you're looking at right now for your Google site, will typically have columns, rows, and then gaps between each row and column. Now, the gaps are commonly referred to as gutters, but for your Google site, we are going to refer to it as spacing. And spacing can be affected in the themes panel, which you can change the density by going from compact to cozy to comfortable which essentially is just changing the space between the columns. You follow me? <laughs> All right, so here, just take a look at this top row that I already have laid out for you that has all 12 columns. I'm going to hover um, the number one just so you can see the full grid and kind of what the layout looks like for your Google site. Now, I'm gonna go and in the spacing and basically change the gutters. So change the space in between each set of these numbers. This is going to affect all things on this page and your entire Google site. But I just wanna share what it looks like once you do that. So I'm gonna make this cozy now. Once I made this cozy, um, you'll see that the number 10, 11, and 12, well, the spacing on the outside of this just is a little bit too dense, so the numbers can't fit. They don't align appropriately. So what has to happen is the content that's written inside of these um, number blocks has to go somewhere. So it has to move it kind of to the next row. Uh, so here, I'll hover this again just so you can take a look. And now you can kind of see that that creates almost a bit of a next row. And again, let's add some more spacing in between here and we'll say comfortable, right? So now you see there's just a whole lot more space in here, but one thing that has not changed is the number of columns. We still have the same number of columns that we started with. It's just, we have a lot more space in between the columns, like a lot more space in between the columns. So I always start by creating my sites now using compact, unless I know specifically that I want to have this big cozy feel. The reason I prefer compact is because you can add spacing to your Google site by simply inserting a spacer. So instead of me, um, having to deal with my numbers if I wanted to use much larger numbers and them like falling off to the side or dropping down to the next row I don't have to worry about it doing that now This adding a next row because of the gutters is not the same as you adding a row 
Um, so here I have this preset of numbers for you. I have the one through 12 across the top. And then because I want it to kind of simulate what you don't see, which would be um, a separate sort of row, I've added it right below each of these numbers. So instead of going 12, you know, and then it would follow 13, I just did 12, 13, 14, I left these blank, 15, 16. What this does in a perfect world, this would be a, a separate row, but it would still count. Um, but for your Google site, this will go 113. So let me show you. So here you have it. We have 113. So it basically goes 1, 2, 13, 14, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15, 9, 10, 11, 16, 12. And again, why is that? It is because everything to the left shifts and stacks on top of the right. So because 1 and 13 are essentially the same, um, we're basically telling it now, okay, these are the same. So just make sure you stack this on top of this and this and this and this and this, so on and so forth. You see, that's why it's important to understand um, Google's own grid and just grids in general uh, because it'll make it easier and you'll get less frustrated with your web designs. Now, one thing I also want to add is that Google isn't just using um, a flex box like the, the lay, for their layout. They're not just using a flex box. Um, they are also using just a box model, which does rely on using things like flow and clear um, so that content can be aligned both vertically and horizontally on the page, which is why you're able to see this like up and down and then there's nothing here. Um, so keep in mind, it's literally just how they have decided to create their, I want to say web builder. And these are some more, these are, I want to say like more legacy way of doing it. But I mean, if it works for them, it works, you know, I'm, <laughs> it, it works. I mean, I use it. <laughs> All right. So what is the final thing you need to know about you know, designing in your Google site. <laughs> it's very simple. The sizing, what is the max width for the content that you are able to put in the center of here? It is 1280, 1280, 1280 pixels. That is what you have to work with in this center section here. Um, typically, if you're going to be using the more, I think it's like the, the compact, what is, it is compact. I think it's compact. Like, don't quote me on it. I'll have to check later. But I believe if you're using the compact spacing, the um, gutter that you're going to have is also set in pixels, by the way, that's going to be uh, roughly 24. And that is going to read as padding on here. So just keep that in mind when you are creating in your Google sites. So I do hope this video was helpful in helping you understand a little bit more about not only grids, but your grids in Google Sites and as a way to help you determine if you want to use Google Sites. Uh, don't count them out, though. There are still so many things that you can do within your website and within web builders in general if you just have a little bit of knowledge, just a little bit. All right. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, laters.